When doing a problem like this, where we're asked to match a function to one of these graphs, the best way to do this isn't with calculus, but to use some graphical features of the function to play process of elimination. So what we're going to do first is find some graphical features. I'm going to say that we've got vertical asymptotes at x equals 3 and x equals negative 3 because x squared minus 9 factors into x minus 3 times x plus 3. We also have an x-intercept at x equals 0. So x-intercept equals 0. Actually, the y-intercept also equals zero. Now unfortunately, none of this information seems to help eliminate any of, these, any of these answers. After all, every graph passes through zero, zero, so that takes care of the x-intercept and y-intercept. And every graph has vertical asymptotes of three and negative three. So it doesn't really help us to eliminate any answers from there. What we're going to do next, though, is play the game of where does the graph exist relative to the x-axis? That is to say, is it positive or is it negative? And we're going to look at a number line at zero, negative three, and three, just using the numbers of the x-intercept and the asymptotes, and play the game of what kind of value do I get when I plug in a number larger than three into this function? So let's take something like x equals four and plug it in here. We'll get four over four squared to 16 minus nine is seven. I don't really care about the number, I just care that it's positive. So I got a positive result by plugging in a number larger than three. Okay, how about plugging in a number between zero and three, like x equals one? When I plug that in, I get one over one minus nine is negative one eighth, but I don't care about the number, I just care that it's negative. Keep playing the same game. Pick your favorite number between negative three and zero, like negative one. When I plug that in, I get negative over negative, which is a positive. And then pick your favorite number less than negative three, like negative four. When I do that here, I get negative four over positive seven. Negative four over positive seven is a negative number. So I'm looking for a graph that exists initially below the x-axis, then goes above the x-axis, then is below the x-axis, then is above the x-axis. So we want our graph to start out as negative. This guy starts out as negative. This graph does not. It starts out as positive, so this is out. This graph starts out as negative, so he's okay. So does this graph. All right, so far so good. Now we want the next interval. From negative 3 to 0, we want the graph to be positive. This graph is positive on the interval from negative 3 to 0. This graph is negative on the interval from negative 3 to 0, so we don't want him. Lastly, we have the interval from 0 to 3. We want the function to be negative. Okay, that part is satisfied for both of these remaining graphs. And so lastly, we have x bigger than 3 for something like x equals 4. We have the graph being positive. This graph is negative since it's below the x-axis. This graph is positive because it's above the x-axis. And so this is our answer.